Creating a new group policy object, right click on group policy objects in the group policy management console and choose new. Give your policy object a name and leave source starter GPO to none. Now right click on your new demo policy object or whatever you called it and hit edit. And here's the group policy management editor. Now let's have a quick reminder. Group policy objects can be linked to three things OUs, sites, or domains. Once they have been linked to an object they can be disabled or enabled. This will effectively turn them on or off. If I applied this policy object to a, an OU, the computer configuration portion of the policy would apply to all computers in that OU. The user configuration portion would apply to all users in that OU. It would not matter who the user is. If the user logged in to a computer in this OU, this computer configuration policy would apply to that computer's configuration. Also, no matter who that user was, if they were in this OU, this configuration would follow them no matter which computer they logged into. Right-click the policy object and choose Properties. Again, this policy object could be used in an organizational unit with both users and computers. If you don't have computers in which to apply the computer configuration changes, disable that. Or if you have no users in that OU and you have no use for the user configuration settings, disable that and this will improve performance. On the Links tab, you can find the sites, domains, and OUs that use this policy object. On the Security tab, only administrators are allowed to change and modify and control a GPO. Okay. Underneath both the computer configuration and the user configuration are policies and preferences nodes. Preferences are new to 2008 server and they allow you to set, uh, they expand upon the range of GPO configuration options so they give you more things you can control, they allow you better uh, item level targeting for your preferences and they can even let the user change a setting once the policy has already been set. Under Policies, you have Software, Windows, Administrative Templates. Uh, under Software Settings, you can add new MSI packages for installing software on your network. Under Windows Settings, you see several things, such as the startup and shutdown scripts that will run when you start up and shut down your computer. Check out the startup properties, and here you can set up multiple scripts, and you can use the up and down to set the order in which the scripts will execute. Here are the security settings. So you can see account policies, which include password policy, which is where you can set the password history, the minimum password age, or maximum password, etc. And let's explain these. So enforce password history. What does that mean? Remember my passwords so that I can't use the same one again. Maximum password age? That's how long should a password last? A lot of places allow maybe for a 90-day password and then you have to change it. Minimum password age. We'll double click this and take a look and you can set this policy in days so that once I've changed my password I have to wait and change it, uh, I have to wait at least a day or so to change it or whatever I set here. Or I can leave that cleared and you can change them immediately. Now why would I want to do that? And one general answer is that I don't want you, the user, to go and just change, cycle through your passwords. I don't want you to try to go around my password history uh, by just cycling through a bunch of brand new passwords one after the other. I'm going to make you use that password for a little while and get used to it. 
let's take a look at password must meet complexity requirements. So here you can see whether or not a particular policy is enabled or disabled. So once I've enabled it, let's explain that. And you can see here's an explanation of the requirements now of how this password needs to be formatted. 